I hope everyone's doing well. I miss you all. So today I wanted to make a quick video so that we can review the Funky Tulip lesson. On the Google Classroom is a PDF that you can print out and work straight off of that. Or if you went up to the school and you picked up your packet, this is included in the packet. Um, if you don't have either one of those, the best thing to do is grab a regular sheet of paper and you can actually draw your tulips out yourself. So just try your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just try and get it as close as you can. Or if you want to take your own spin on it, you can. Once you have that in front of you, you're also going to need a pencil. Um, that's what we're going to get started with today. A pencil and possibly an eraser in case you want to erase anything that you make mistakes with. All right, so go ahead, get those supplies ready, and come on back, and we'll get started. Okay, everyone, so we're back. I have my tulips laid out in front of me. As you can see, it's just a black outline of a bunch of different tulips. So if you do not have a regular printout of this, you can just take a piece of paper and draw them yourselves. So we're going to be talking about pattern today. And there is so many different types of designs and patterns out there. Uh, attached to this packet, I included a bunch of them. I found some of these online that you can look at for references. Um, they're just a bunch of different really cool patterns, but don't feel like you're limited to these. You can create your own as well. So these are just a reference point for you if you run out of ideas for patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to start to fill in different patterns in different shapes. So if I have a tulip here, maybe I want to create a polka dot pattern and start with that. Um, and don't feel like you have to do a different pattern for each thing. Um, if you wanna do all the tulips in polka dots and you can change the colors, you can. Say you wanna do a couple of them in the polka dots, and I'm doing different size polka dots because I think that gives it a more interesting look. Like I said, that's just my own preference, but you can do what you wish. So make sure it's nice and even and it fills up the whole thing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure everything is filled with pattern. Maybe on this one, I don't want that polka dot and I want a zigzag pattern. You can do that, but in the different shapes, just make sure that you fill in all of the spaces. All right. So once I, I'm starting to come in and fill those tops in. I want to also fill the leaves in. Um, I'm going to reference one of my patterns from my worksheet. Um, which one? I like this one. It's just a bunch of curved lines. And then you're going to switch after a couple of them, you're just going to switch those curved lines in a different direction. And it makes for a really cool pattern. So this is playing with coloring things in by using pattern as opposed to just color. Uh, we're at the point where your coloring is starting to be really developed. You're starting to get really neat with your coloring, which is awesome, but we wanna take that to the next level and see how we can really make things look unique through pattern. So I'm coming in, I'm filling in the whole thing with my curved lines and I'm just flipping them once in a while. And I'm going to fill in all of this with pattern. So I'm going to go through and do that. I'll speed it up so that way you don't have to wait around for me. And then I will show you the next step. Okay, everyone, so I have pattern filled in every single spot except for my stems. I think it's okay to leave your stems uh, empty just because there's such a small area that if you add design, you're not really going to see it anyway. Once you finish all your design, if you want to come in with a Sharpie and go over all of that pattern that you just did, it will make it look much better. Um, you don't have to, if you don't have a Sharpie, a black 
colored pencil or black crayon or any black marker works great. So you could go ahead and do that if you want. If you really think it came out awesome with just the pencil, you may leave it. Um, and I'm gonna go over and do all of that and then come on back and show you how to color it in. All right, so I came in with my Sharpie and I went over all my patterns. Like I said, you don't have to do this. This is just an extra step that I wanted to do so that you could see it, um, but you're more than welcome to do this as well. Now we're gonna start to color in our artwork. You can use markers for this. I have all these fun different markers, um, colors. You can use really anything that you have available. Crayons work if you have crayons. Um, watercolor could be a fun option for this. Colored pencil, because you could get in those little details. So I'm gonna, I think, work with some watercolors today. Um, just if you're using watercolors on this paper, make sure that you're not adding a lot of water because it is a thinner paper. And use a tiny, tiny brush if you have one. If you don't have these supplies, just do markers or colored pencil. They all come out great. It's really up to you what you wanna use. So I might even use some marker and some colored pencil. Uh, just make sure you don't go over the colored pencil, uh, the colored pencil and watercolor together. You wanna keep them separate, same with marker. Just make sure one is dry before you go into something else. So I think I'm gonna start with a little bit of blue and I'm just gonna start to fill in some of my pattern. So if I do blue here on my dots, I wanna make sure that I'm filling in the whole thing. Uh, maybe the outside I want purple And watercolor is a little bit more organic. It bleeds a little bit more. So you have to try and use little water so that it doesn't bleed everywhere. Um, this is a lot simpler if you're using colored pencil. Uh, just try not to leave a lot of white spaces in whatever you use. So that's my first one and it's done. And when I come to a stripe, I wanna create a pattern. I don't wanna fill the whole thing in with say yellow. Say I'm using yellow. Um, I want to do one stripe in yellow and then I want to skip one or two maybe and keep that pattern going. Maybe this one, two. Okay. And then maybe I want to come into a different color. Maybe I want to do orange. Maybe I want to do a warm color one. And I'm going to create a pattern. That's very important that we're actually filling in the patterns that we created. Otherwise, there was no point of putting all these fun patterns in if we're not going to color them in a pattern. So make sure you're going ahead and doing that. And you're going to fill in the whole artwork. And it's going to look really cool in the end. For the stems, I'm just going to finish mine real quick. leaving no white spots and it adds a really cool dimension to some of our flowers that would traditionally just be one color this makes it really fun and funky so for my stems this is the only thing that I'm gonna ask that you just keep one color so that way it breaks up all that pattern All right, I will show you the finished product in the end. Have fun with this. Um, be creative if you wanna come up with some new patterns. I cannot wait to see what you come up with and how these turn out. All right, so here's my finished product. I happen to use watercolor for this one, but don't feel obligated to use watercolor. You can really use any supplies that you want, such as markers, colored pencils, crayons. Um, or oil pastel, anything. Uh, you can see how I alternated colors here. So I did purple, red, purple, red, light blue, dark blue, light blue, dark blue. Here I even used three color combinations. Um, same as here, like light green, dark green, yellow. I tried to keep the leaves in the same color story so that it separated it from the tulips. Because if I were to put purple in the leaves and the flowers, it might get confusing as to what's a leaf and what's a flower. So try and keep all the leaves in the same color story uh, and then have fun with the color in the tulips. 
because we want that funky style flower that we're going for. Uh, overall, I think these are really fun. I'm excited to see what your patterns and your designs and your coloring comes out to be. All right, so I'm looking forward to them.